everybody, it's Alex, and welcome to Vegan with a Passport. Join me on this world tour right in New York City, where we'll be exploring vegan restaurants, each specializing in a specific cuisine from American, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, French, Italian, and Ethiopian. We'll also be doing some shopping at all vegan stores. Let's go ahead and get this foodie adventure started. First, we have to go check out this all vegan French restaurant which specializes in sweet and savory crepes, vegan meats, vegan cheeses, and desserts. My friend said she hates onions, so I decided to order this French onion soup for myself. But after she tasted it, she then proceeded to eat two thirds of my soup. Rude. Anyway, this tasted exactly like how I remember French onion soup tasting in my pre-vegan days. There was a nice balanced taste between the onions and the cheese, and it had a creamy consistency. And then my friend proceeded to order this pasta dish, which included vegan shrimp, scallops, squid, and olive oil. The seafood was tapioca and potato starch based, and surprisingly did to some degree have that rubbery consistency that octopus does have. However, I don't recall really getting the texture of shrimp. And I can't comment on scallops. The dish came with a side of vegan cheese, and overall, we found the dish to be a flavorful, light, meaty tasting pasta dish. I then decided to order this beef stew. The dish included a pea protein based beef, which was marinated in Pinot Noir, carrots, and potatoes. The dish had a strong, meaty taste to it, and the beef paired well with the vegetables and the broth. While the meat had a slightly dense texture, it wasn't overdone. For our final item, we decided to get some sweet crates. We decided to get a banana crepe, and we also decided to get a strawberry crepe. These crepes were served hot, and they were topped with chocolate sauce and whipped cream. The crates weren't overly sweet, and they also had a thin consistency, which made it easy to taste all of the toppings while still enjoying the dough from the crepe. Now our next foodie adventure will take us to this all vegan Korean restaurant which has a Michelin bib. Here at Hangawi, you can get a variety of dishes from tofus, dumplings, soups, and bean boom box. We first decided to get the vegetable dumplings which we decided to get steamed. I personally couldn't distinguish the vegetable taste, it just tasted as if I was eating a dumpling without filling, however my friend enjoyed them. And then we decided to get bean boom bops as our mains. This is a type of Korean rice dish and they actually come to your table and cook it right in front of you. They also ask you how much sauce you want and overall I thought it was a fun concept. My friend got the avocado bean boom bop which came with vegetables, mushrooms, greens and came with a side of miso sauce. And then I decided to order the hangawi bean boom bop which included vegetables and chili sauce. We both enjoyed our bowls and found them to be flavorful with the added sauces. And to wrap things up, we ordered dessert. We ordered the red beans and ice cream rhapsody. This included an almond and soy based chocolate and vanilla ice cream, which was then topped with red beans, yum crackers, and rice crisp. We thought the chocolate ice cream had a very weak chocolate flavor. But overall, we did enjoy our ice cream dessert and we also loved the red beans and crunchy elements on top that complemented the ice cream. Now let's check out this small all vegan grocer called Orchard Grocer. And although this is a place where you can come get some groceries and some snacks, it's well known for the deli inside. At the deli, you can get a variety of sandwiches either on their traditional bread or on a croissant. And what they're even more well known for is their soft serve with this cashew and olive oil base. Texture wise, this is one of the best soft serves I've had and my vegetarian friend said it's the best vegan one she's had. We agreed that it wasn't as soft as a dairy soft serve, but since it's not dairy, does it really need to be as soft as a dairy soft serve? We also agreed that there was no icy texture, which from my experience, when it usually comes to vegan soft serves, that is not the norm. 
My friend said it was the consistency of dairy ice cream that you would buy in the store in the frozen section. Now as for taste, the vanilla taste was very mild and I couldn't really taste it until it melted. Now as for my friend, she really enjoyed her ice cream with the caramel sauce. Now as we were too busy evaluating that soft serve, we didn't take notes on the sandwiches, but we did say they were delicious and that croissant sandwich, oh my goodness, delicious. Attached to Orchard Grocer is an all vegan shoe store called Moo Shoes. Besides shoes, they also sell other items such as vegan leather belts, bats, and wallets. They even sell hygiene and everyday home products to help you live a more eco-conscious and zero-waste lifestyle. Now if you can't come in and say hello to Georgie the Cat, no worries. They also have an online shop and they do post sales on their Instagram weekly. Now our next stop around the globe is this all-vegan Ethiopian restaurant called Buna Cafe. Here, you can get a platter with a variety of sides and a jar of bread, or you can get entrees, which I've never seen as an option as a vegan before, and this includes breakfast dishes and even desserts. I decided to build my own platter, which had a variety of delicious vegetables and proteins. There was literally a dance party happening on my tongue. The dishes ranged from sweet to savory to sour. All of the dishes tasted well separately as well as together and tasted great with the fermented injera bread. Now let's go to Italy and have a feast at this all vegan Italian restaurant called Coletta. We first started off with the fried calamari, and although texture-wise, I did enjoy the crunchiness of it, I just found the taste to taste like, well, fried batter. But I also have never had calamari, but I didn't find anything taste-wise to be significant. However, my friend said that it tasted just like calamari, and she enjoyed the taste of it. We then decided to try the wild mushroom truffle pizza. I really enjoyed the crust and found it to be chewy and soft and my friend actually said that it reminded her of pizza from Italy. Now as for the taste, I did find the mushroom taste to be pretty strong. It is a truffle pizza after all. However, I did enjoy the creamy taste of the pizza and I also did enjoy the taste of the ricotta cheese on the pizza. There were also some bites that had a mildly sweet taste to it and overall I enjoyed the bites without the mushroom better. My friend enjoyed the flavor of the pizza and said she would eat it again as is. The next dish we decided to order was chicken alfredo. My friend said the chicken taste was realistic, but texture wise, it reminded her of salmon. Overall, she wasn't the biggest fan of the chicken taste nor the texture. Now, while I didn't find the chicken to be problematic, it also didn't stand out to me. Now we both enjoyed the creamy taste of the pasta, however I was expecting more sauce but my friend said it's common to get less sauce in Italy. And then we decided to order another pasta dish and this time we went with the black ink ravioli stuffed with ricotta. Now as for the black ink, we didn't taste anything that was different about the pasta, it tasted just like regular pasta. Now as for the stuffing of the ravioli, it was herby and had a stuffed ricotta cheese flavor. And no feast is complete without dessert. For our first dessert, we decided to get the strawberry panna cotta. We both enjoyed the rich strawberry flavor and jello consistency, and this panna cotta didn't have a flan consistency like how some panna cottas can have. And then for our final dessert, we decided to get tiramisu. And honestly, it was just okay. There really wasn't anything memorable about it for the either of us. Now, while we both had a dish where we felt iffy about, we both said we would easily dine here again. Now, let's go check out this all vegan confectionery shop that's literally called Confectionery with an exclamation mark. This shop mainly specializes in vegan macaroons and chocolates. However, they also sell pastries such as cookies and cakes. I ended up getting a box of macaroons and a box of chocolates to go in a variety of flavors and these both ended up being delicious treats. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let's go check out this all vegan food cart that has a variety of American comfort foods called grilled. We first started off with a chocolate milkshake and unfortunately we found the milkshake to be overly sugary. And I personally found it to be lacking that cream flavor that most American based milkshakes usually have. Now as for the rest of the food, we decided to get a few items. Now as my friend was waiting a while for her hot dog, they were super sweet and gave my friend this kid's hot dog for the long wait, which she enjoyed. Now for the actual hot dog she ordered, she got one with onion, now wait a minute, I, I, I thought she didn't like onion. Anyway, soup stiller, it came with onion, relish, and cheese. We both found it to be flavorful with the toppings and to have somewhat of a meaty flavor. We also got this double cheeseburger with these thinly smashed patties. And this was also tasty with this meaty and cheesy taste. My friend also wanted to film me eating the hamburger and since she watches all of my videos, here's some unsolicited footage of me eating the hamburger. Lastly, we ordered some chili cheese fries. These were quite the treat and was my favorite dish from the cart. The fries were soft, the cheese was melted, and there was a chili taste to the dish. Speaking of restaurants on the affordable end, let's go check out this all vegan Japanese restaurant called Beyond Sushi. This restaurant primarily specializes in sushi, however you can get other dishes including dumplings, ramen, and other Japanese eats. We decided to get four different sushis. We decided to get the spicy tuna sushi, which came with avocado, cucumber, black sesame, orange seaweed, caviar, and miso glaze. We also decided to get the spicy jackfruit crab sushi, which came with pickled red onions, marinated carrots, avocado, chili, ponzo, and toasted cayenne sauce. We then decided to get the rainbow sushi, which included vegan tuna, vegan salmon, marinated carrots, cucumber, avocado, pickled red cabbage, dill, hijiki, lemon zest, and smoked pepper sauce. And then lastly, we got the char avocado sushi, which included jackfruit crab, black truffle caviar, and of course, charred avocado. We thought two of the sushis were just okay, while the other two wowed our taste buds. However, we had our differences on which two were meh, and which two were wowzers. At this point, you know we can't stay away from dessert. We decided to order the ube cashew cheesecake. This included a ginger cookie crust, hot chocolate fudge, ginger cookie streusel, and fresh mint. Now the only thing I remember is us saying, wow, this is delicious, by us proceeding to devour the dish. And us forgetting to take notes. Now let's continue treating our sweet tooth by checking out an all vegan donut shop called Dunwell Donuts, where here you can find a plethora of donut flavors. My friend, her roommate and I ended up trying 12 different flavors. We thought a couple were okay, but overall, unfortunately, we weren't impressed with the flavors of most of the donuts. We're not sure if this was an off day or if the restaurant just isn't meant for us. Now, we have to check out this all vegan Chinese restaurant specializing in Szechuan cuisine called Spicy Moon. We first ordered this bao bun, which came with mushrooms, a Szechuan spice vegan cream sauce, and a side of pickled vegetables. Overall, it was just okay, but not that memorable. We then decided to go with the vegetable dumplings, and overall, we enjoyed them and could distinguish the taste of vegetables in the dumplings. For one of our mains, we decided to go with Dan Dan noodles. I enjoyed the flavor of the noodles knowing that peanut butter was in the dish, however, since my friend was unaware, the peanut butter flavor threw her off. Texture wise, it was mildly chalky, most likely due to the peanut butter. For our next main, we decided to go with the compound dish, which was made with vegan chicken, and we added vegetables to it. 
We found this dish to be delicious with the meaty taste and the crunchy texture of the chicken and with the flavors from the vegetables. Lastly, we had the crab ragoons, which was stuffed with sea bean vegan cream cheese and with Szechuan hot vegan honey. The ragoons were crispy towards the ends, soft towards the insides, had a delicious cream cheese filling, and reminded me of a traditional crab ragoon. Now a trip to New York City is incomplete without trying the famous New York City style pizza. So let's go check out an all vegan pizzeria specializing in the pizza called Screamer's Pizza. You can either order pizza by the slice or by the pie. My friend and I decided to try three different flavors. We ended up getting a regular cheese slice as a baseline test. We also decided to try the artichoke pizza and lastly, we try a sausage and jalapeno pizza. Now, as for the artichoke pizza, honestly, neither of us enjoyed it. Something was just off about the flavor profile. As for the sausage and jalapeno pizza, it wasn't bad, but it also wasn't memorable. However, when it came to the regular cheese slice, we actually enjoyed the pizza and we were raving about it. Now, all of the pizzas had a lovely soft dough. But when it came to flavor, the cheese flavor came through and was popping while the other slices, the flavors were either just not strong enough or were off-putting. Now let's explore our horizons and check out this pan-Asian restaurant that's all vegan. We first started off with a mango lassi which had a very mild tangy creamy yogurt taste but it was also sweet and ended up just overall being delicious. We then ended up getting the scallion pancake, and while it wasn't bad, there wasn't anything special about it. I then ordered this noodles and dumpling soup, and overall, it was just okay. Now, while the broth was delicious and flavorful, the noodles were plain. Now, while there were dumplings in the dish, and while those were also delicious, there were only a few of them, and unfortunately, the noodles took precedence over the dish. And then my friend ended up ordering this veggie noodle stir fry, which was delicious to the both of us. The dish ended up consisting of thick noodles and also had a combination of tofu and vegetables. There was also this mildly sweet sauce, which also added flavor. For our last restaurant for today's adventure, let's check out this spot that serves a variety of dishes from American style brunch, American comfort dishes, pizzas and pastas and unique spins on vegetables. This is an all vegan restaurant called Blossom. I first ended up having this spaghetti squash cake and mushroom risotto. Now while the taste of the dish was delicious and there were a variety of flavors occurring here, I did have a difficult time chewing the spinach and overall the cake didn't hold its shape just making it difficult to eat. The last thing I ended up ordering were fried artichokes. Now as for the breading, I did find the taste of it to be plain, however I did enjoy the crunchiness of it. And as for the taste of the artichoke, there was a mild artichoke flavor to the dish. It also came with this sauce which ended up being delicious. It reminded me of a tangy lemon sauce. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to stick around to see more videos like this one around the globe. And until next time, bye!